Hey everybody, Russ here with Russ Rome's YouTube channel. I recently completed my own experimental aircraft called a Cozy Mark IV, and we've been flying it all over the East Coast, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So we took a trip to Destin last weekend, but on the way back, suddenly my uh, voltage read 12.1 volts. Christy said, hey, what's that? So I looked down, and sure enough, it appeared that the main alternator had failed, which is crazy because this is, uh, I've got like 110 hours on this airplane. So it's, and everything's brand new, brand new BNC alternator, brand new BNC uh, voltage regulator. Uh, but thankfully I installed a auxiliary alternator, the one that plugs into the original vacuum pad location. Um, and so all I had to do was turn off the main alternator and turn on the auxiliary alternator, no problem. Voltage came right back up, we continued our flight. So A plus for thinking ahead and building some redundancy into the system. However, that left me to, uh, to diagnose what the problem might be. So I get out here tonight and pull the cowl and it's pretty dang obvious what the problem is. The main B lead for the alternator has broken at the terminal. Check this out. So here is the rear end of the alternator, and this is what actually uh, brings the bus, bus voltage up to 14.1 um, or 14.5 volts. And this thing <laughs> has failed at the ring terminal and came completely off. So I guess all I have to do is replace this line and make sure that this doesn't uh, vibrate against it anymore and uh, we should be good to go. But while I get that fixed up, let's go ahead and talk about how an alternator works on aircraft. One of the things that I love so much about experimental aviation is that it gives you a deep, deep knowledge of almost every system of your aircraft by beating you over the head with these things year after year. Let's start with a basic aviation wiring diagram. Now, I spent a lot of money on these highly technical graphics, so if you like them, be sure to like the video and comment below on how I can improve them. Let's take a look. Let's start with the battery. Here we have the positive and negative poles. In circuit diagrams, it's typical to omit the ground path from the rest of the diagram because there's not much fun stuff happening back here. Some aircraft use the metal structure itself as the ground and others have big fat wires uh, that connect all the equipment back to the ground of the battery. All of the fun stuff happens on the positive side of the battery. So first, power needs to connect through the master contactor. A contactor is just a big switch that can carry lots of current. So when you flip the master switch here, and you hear the click behind the instrument panel, that's the master solenoid engaging the electrical system. I like to think of this as a big power lever, like in Frankenstein. But instead of a maniacal doctor moving the letter, it's a big magnet which may actually be scarier than Frankenstein, depending on your views about magnets. Now that the master switch is turned on and the master contactor is engaged, current will flow through the main bus into any of the equipment that's attached to the master bus. This includes your brand new, very expensive EFIS. Eventually though, the EFIS will not only drain your poor wallet, but also your battery. So we need some way to both power the system and charge the battery at the same time. That's where our alternator comes in. The alternator's job is to produce enough power to raise the bus voltage up to 14 volts instead of 12 volts that the battery can put out. When that happens, the battery will no longer be the source of the power on the bus, and in fact, current will reverse and start flowing back into the battery, charging it at the same time. Let's cut to more fancy graphics and see what the voltage looks like. Here's a diagram of what's happening when the alternator is turned on and then back off. Voltage is on the vertical axis here, Time is on the horizontal axis here. When we first turn on the master bus with the engine off, the equipment on the bus begins to draw the power down off the battery. The battery will slowly lose voltage over time until it goes kaput. Hopefully before that happens, we will have started the engine and engaged the alternator. When that happens, the alternator will immediately bring the voltage up to 14 volts and it'll remain there for the duration of the flight. 
If the alternator is turned off or fails in some way, like what happened to my airplane, the voltage will drop back down from 14 volts down to 12 or so. Your electrical equipment will then continue running for as long as the battery has voltage. Alternators in aviation come in two types, internally and externally regulated. They both function the same, but the externally regulated alternator will have a separate box mounted on the firewall, while the internal version has the regulator built into the alternator itself. The regulator in both types sends what the bus voltage is here, then it will regulate the output of the alternator based on the current going through the field terminal. The alternator outputs power onto the B terminal and drives all the equipment on the main bus and charges the battery at the same time. Earlier when I showed you my part that broke, this is what you're looking at, the B terminal of the alternator. I like to think B stands for the business end of the alternator, but you can let me know what you think in the comments below. So that's it. Now we know what's happening if we ever see a sudden voltage drop in flight. Now come join me for a quick test flight as we go see if our repair was successful. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I guess it didn't work. What do you say we go for a flight anyway? I need a uh, a comfort flight, I guess. Huntsville clearance delivery, experimental cozy, 6.5 Tango Mike at signature ramp. Like to do 3000 to the northwest practice area with information x-ray. Cozy 6.5 Tango Mike, Huntsville clearance departure frequency will be 118.05 and squad 5521. Departure 11805, squawk 5521 for 65 Tango Mike. Cozy 5 Tango Mike, read back there. Shout out to the Huntsville ATC. Those guys have done an incredible job for me ever since I started flying my Cozy. All the way through phase one, those guys were just phenomenal at keeping me close to the airport. And uh, despite me doing <laughs> some pretty crazy maneuvers during uh, the flight test program, um, up and down, altitude changes constantly, direction changes constantly, uh, you know, those guys were always accommodating. Uh, to keep me safe, so shout out to uh, Huntsville controllers. Well, I guess unfortunately, I did not get my alternator fixed. It was apparently more broken than just the B lead. So let's do a quick test flight here and uh, runway heading runway three six left. Perfect. Take some of the first in-flight footage and see how that comes out. Okay, we're on the left tank. Canopy is closed and locked. Battery bolts are not happy, but we're okay for now. We're on the auxiliary alternator. Okay, mixture's rich. Nose is down, brake is up, fuel is on. Get lined up here. On 3-6 right. All right. We have 4269, contact departure, good day. Departure 4269, see ya. Alright, 
positive rate. That was up. possibly be wrong with my alternator. Um, clearly the B lead being disconnected was an issue and but we got that fixed up. I had originally thought that the arcing between the B lead and the alternator line itself may have uh, sent some electrical gremlins down that line. I replaced the fuse link that was in that line as well so I know that the fuse is not busted. So the external regulator that I have installed on my airplane has something called an overvoltage fuse. If the regulator detects an overvoltage condition on the B lead, it will blow the fuse and then send no more current to the field line of the alternator. That would effectively turn off the alternator as well. So it's possible that my alternator field fuse is busted. Unfortunately, it's in the back of my dang airplane. I don't have access to it up here. So I'm just going to go for a fun flight today and uh, when we get back on the ground, I'll check the fuse and see. Hopefully that's it and I didn't fry the external regulator. That's what I'm actually worried about. So that ring terminal broke between the ring part of it and the part that crimps onto the wire. That seems like kind of a crazy place to me for it to break cleanly like that. Um, I used the same ring terminal to build the new cable but I'm a little worried that it is going to be susceptible to the same failure. So if you have an idea about how to beef up that ring terminal or a different one that I should use, let me know your idea in the comment section below. So today, for our demo flight, uh, we're running on my auxiliary alternator. My auxiliary alternator is a gear-driven alternator that's installed where a normal vacuum pump would go. I have no vacuum instruments in my plane, so it's a perfectly, it was a great place to put a backup alternator. One of the design challenges of a backup alternator in that position is spinning it fast enough to bring the bus voltage up. What I found with my backup alternator is that if the, at low engine RPMs, it does not produce the rated voltage that the regulator wants to bring the bus up to. Currently we're at 14 volts, but it should be up at 14 and a half or so. Watch, I'll pull the power back and you will see the voltage come down as well. Watch. Okay, power's back to idle. Voltage is coming down. It's 13 volts, 13.0, 12.87. So, that's one downside of the, the auxiliary alternator. You need to have higher engine speed in order to charge the bus. Let's just have some fun here today. Seeing a lot of birds here. Please stay away from me, birds.
Tech. So great news. I did some troubleshooting and I found a wire that should have been powered and it wasn't. And so I did some more checking and turns out it was the fuse that was blown. Uh, I just happened to look at the wrong one because I never got around to labeling my fuse block. Smart Russ. Lesson learned, I'll go get my label maker out right now. <laughs> See you guys.